Um, okay, so uh, one of the next things I'd like us to see here um, is uh, actually emphasizing uh, this uh, using this machine not as the root user, so as the sandbox user instead of as the root user. And so, in other words, if I look at my script, if I look at my output right now, I have some stuff that currently belongs to the sandbox user. I've got this output file. I've got this my first script.sh. And I can confirm who it belongs to, of course, by checking the permissions, ls-l. And I can see, yeah, this stuff belongs to the sandbox user. All right. Now, what I'm curious about is how do we start interacting with some of our scripts and some of our data when I've got different users, when permissions uh, perhaps start becoming an issue and ownership perhaps starts to become an issue. So let's try this. I'd like to make a file, but I don't want the file to belong to Sandbox. So how could we do that? I want to make a file like roots file. All right. And so if we just do a touch of like roots underscore file dot txt, that of course would make it as the Sandbox user. And I could use chown, right? I could use chown to, to change the ownership of it and give it over to root. Um, another thing I could do is just run the touch command with sudo. So now instead of making the file as me, I'll have the sudo user create it. It doesn't matter which one you do, whether you use uh, sudo touch or whether you use the chown command. But the whole goal here is you want to make sure that I want a file, but I don't own the file. The file belongs to root. And so because the file belongs to root, I do not have right access to this file. All right. I have read access to this file, but I don't have write access to this file by default. That's the situation that I want to be in. And I don't want to be running, running as the root user where a lot of these permission things just kind of get tossed out the window when you run as root. Um, so here's the nuance of what I want us to see. And that is, what if I tried to write some output to roots file in my script? What if I tried to write some output to roots file right here at the terminal? These are some things I do want us to see and I want us to understand. So here's kind of where I'm going with this is if I had some output like this, where I try to say like echo, you know, sandbox and put that into roots underscore file dot txt. If I'm just trying to write the name sandbox into roots file dot txt, we should realize because of the ownership, you don't have permission to do that, right? You don't have right permission to send information like that to be able to do that. And so the classic mistake that everyone says is, well, let's use the magic word to get what I want, which is I'm going to add sudo onto the front, right? I'm going to say sudo echo sandbox and redirect that to file.txt and that will give me what I want, right? Wait, how do I still have permission denied? Right? I, I thought I ran this with sudo. And so we're kind of getting into a nuanced situation here where we have to realize that whenever you use one of these redirects, what that technically does is spawns a subshell in the background to do the writing of the information. And whenever you're spawning subshells in the background, um, you don't have the permissions of whatever command you had before. You inherit the permissions of who you're logged in as. So in other words, sudo is being applied to the echo. Sudo is not being applied to the writing portion. And so you can run commands with sudo, especially when you're trying to write information and get permission denied. And it doesn't actually allow you to do this. Um, if you're running as the root user, that subshell that gets spawned in the background inherits root permission. And so you never, you never really see this problem when you're writing things and running as root all the time. But even with sudo capable accounts, like my sandbox user can run things with sudo, that's not the problem. The problem is, yeah, you, you got to understand a little bit about how Linux deals with some of this stuff. And so we do want to be able to solve this problem. And what I want to show is that actually scripting is one way that you can solve this problem. And so if you took this same command, this echo some data and write it into roots file, you actually can put that in a script and then execute the script. And let's let's try to see how that works. So let me go back into my first script here and see how I could solve the problem with this. So how about instead of my output path going to output.txt, I'll send it to roots underscore file.txt. So of course, I'm now trying to write data to a file that I do not currently own, right? Slash home slash sandbox roots underscore file.txt. Let's save that, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, roots underscore file. And so if I run my script now, you'll start to see um, we kind of are still in the same uh, uh, same boat, right? If I try to type sandbox, 
we still have the same issue where I'm writing, but I got a permission denied error on line 10. So it tries to write, but again, it's running as the permissions uh, of the sandbox user. But here's, of course, the tricky part is that when you execute scripts, you can execute the entire script with sudo. And so now the entire thing is running as root, including any of the subshells that will spawn off of that. And so how could you execute a script with, with root? Well, you, you run sudo before you run the script. So I could say sudo space and then type the file path to where the script is. You could do your dot slash, you could do the slash home slash sandbox slash my first script, right? You just execute the script now, but put sudo before you execute the script. All right, and then say, sure, okay, so what's my second message? My second message is sandbox. And you see this time I did not get an error. And so now if I cat out roots file, you'll see that one actually did execute successfully. And so it is possible you can execute scripts using sudo. You just have to remember you're not doing a command after it. The, the script itself is the command that you're executing. And this can be a way that inside your scripts, you can have things that would require sudo, but just have the entire script run as sudo all right, by, by doing this. Um, this is a much better technique in general than trying to do things like this where you would come into here and try putting pseudos in your scripts in different places. Like, no, you, you, you probably shouldn't be doing that. If you find yourself knowing, hey, I've got a command in my script I want to execute, and that command requires pseudo, like, don't put pseudo in the script, just run the entire script with pseudo. So then it will execute everything in the script correctly, because otherwise you're going to get these strange password prompts as the script goes and executes. Like, yeah, that, that, that's not something that we're going to want to be dealing with. So run your script with sudo. Don't be putting sudo throughout the script to uh, run your uh, uh, your commands. Um, but anyways, that you, you'll, you'll be able to learn some more of the nuance of things like that later as we go. Um, however, because I've now kind of shown this problem of I want to take information pseudo echoes sandbox and try to write it to roots file and it's like this doesn't work just flat out this does not work when you're when you're not uh, running as root if you're running as root this can work but if you're not running as root this doesn't work and so a lot of times you have a pseudo enabled account and you don't have the ability to do this so i do want to show a way you can actually solve this problem though and uh, of course the trick is don't use one of the most classic ways that both myself as well as a lot of internet and website resources tell you how to write information to a file just shortcut here on the screen. So don't use this type of redirect. Um, you actually instead could use a different technique to write data to a file. And so uh, this gives us a good opportunity to actually look at uh, another command, a command called the T command. And so T is a command that can write data to files. It can also spit data out here at the terminal, but it also can write data to files. And so what you can do is take the output from any of your commands and pipe it to the T command. So yes, just because I'm just trying to say the word sandbox, I don't have to echo the data to T, but I'm just trying to show an example of what it would commonly be like. So normally you'd have some type of command that uh, generates some data, right? Sandbox. So something like that. I've got some command that generates data. And if you want to write it to a file and permissions are an issue, perhaps it's owned by root um, and you need elevated permissions to do that, this is what you would do. You would take your command and send the data to the T command. And T is the command that's actually going to do the writing. And here's the tricky part to this. If you send data to the T command, realize it's not the echo part that needs the pseudo. Right? Anyone can echo out data. That's not the problem. The problem is what's the command that's going to do the writing? That's the T command. So this is where we put the sudo. So sudo does not necessarily always just go at the front. No, it has to go before the command that you want to execute with elevated permissions. So it is possible that you might have to have sudo at multiple places in some type of line that you're creating as you start piping data because it's only going to get applied to the very next command. In this case, we don't need it for the echo, but we do need it for the T, all right? And so if I wanted to have data in here, I could have data that I'm actually trying to write. But remember, in this particular instance, I'm piping the data to T, so I don't actually have to have the data. All I have to have is the file path. So this is where I would have my, my roots file.txt. So it's a good trick to know about if you ever have to write data just right here at the terminal to some file and permissions are a thing, pipe the data to T and use sudo on the T part. 
And so now when I run this, it does do the echo of the sandbox. But if I cat out my roots file, we'll see I was able to write my sandbox information to that file. And so that was definitely a good trick to be able to know about here. Anytime you uh, you have some permissions that uh, might be an issue. So definitely some good stuff here to get us started and and uh, uh, realize how permissions can become an issue and how sometimes if you have some command that uses redirects, um, I've definitely done things like this before where I've got some command and it's got redirects. If I just run it here at the terminal, it doesn't work. If you take that same exact command and put it in a script and then execute the script with sudo, then it will work. And so that's another way you could, uh, uh, if you did for whatever reason, want to use some other type of notation and you're worried about where does the sudo go? Does it go here? Does it go somewhere else? How do I actually do this? Take the entire line, just put it in a single file and then run that entire script using sudo. And it's a way you can kind of get past the permission and everything inside there will will, want, will uh, run with root correctly. And you don't have to worry about where to put the sudo quite as, uh, quite as diligently. Mm -hmm.